Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is a 492nd Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. Straight away you'll see this is fought on a custom map, and this custom map was hosted by Brotherhood member Mars. I always think it's nice to host on some custom maps better than just using the ordinary maps all the time. Okay, our first uh, teammate is uh, Mars, and he has got the Judo faction, and he's got 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. Okay, 14 infantry and 6 cavalry, just show you... Um, a little bit of his army build here and you can see that he's got an eagle unit uh, here and he's got an infantry general as well okay so he's got a lot of morale there going on in his infantry so let's say 14 infantry six cavalry there with an eagle unit as well as an infantry general so let's say there's a lot of morale going on there okay our next teammate is brotherhood member uh, JGP now JGP has got 11 infantry three archers and six cavalry okay 11 infantry three archers and six cavalry quick look at the upgrades on his cavalry usually got very good cavalry and as you can see there he's got eight upgrades two experienced stripes gold shield gold attack okay so he always brings serious cavalry remember this cavalry is good with just gold shield gold attack but you put two experienced stripes on and that can really make a difference so i think that's a really good balanced roman army there and should be quite effective during the course of the battle our next teammate is myself, Spartan Commander, who has unusually bought the Britannia faction. Got a very old-fashioned army of eight chosen swordsmen, five head herders, and six chariots. But we'll have a look at a little bit closer at that army a little bit later on. And our fourth teammate is Brotherhood member Pompey. Now Pompey has got 17 infantry and three cavalry. 17 infantry and three cavalry there, so he's gone quite heavy on the infantry for this particular battle. So there's our team. As you can see, there should be a great battle for you to watch. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a look at my very old-fashioned, old-school Britannia army here. Okay, so we say you've got eight uh, chosen swordsmen, and I've got five head herders there. Okay, now, um, as you know, um, with modern uh, Britannia armies, they usually bring like 14 head herders and six chariots. But just have a look at the head herders here, just to say that those heads that they throw are effective against armor. So if you've got 14 units of head herders, imagine the volume of heads, uh, effective against armor heads you could throw in onto the enemy troops. And if you can get that right, if you get the timing right there with your 14 head herders uh, in combination with your allies, then you can be absolutely devastating with 14 units of head herders. But remember, if you don't uh, help win the battle by the time all the heads have been thrown, all you've got is 14 light infantry. Okay, so make no, no mistake, 14 units of head herders can turn the battle with the casualties that they can cause. Okay, and they can be battle winning troops, but as I say, if you haven't won the battle by the time they've thrown all their heads, all you've got is 14 units of light infantry. Okay, so that's why I like to bring a more balanced army here, because believe it or not, these chosen swordsmen have actually gone on and helped to win the battle um, in combination with my allies in the past. So that's why I like to, as I say, to bring an old-fashioned um, balanced army, Britannia army, rather than the new type of, as I say, 14 head herders and 6 max chariots. Okay, talking about chariots here, just have a look at that, I've bought the Barbarian Warlord chariots. Now, the uh, uh, Brits have got two uh, types of chariots, you've got the ordinary heavy chariots and these Barbarian Warlord chariots. Now, the difference is that the ordinary heavy chariots have got three points, uh, three hit points, Okay, but these Barbarian Warlord Chariots have got five hit points. And over the years I've experimented with both types of chariots and uh, those extra two hit points with these Barbarian Warlords really do make the difference. Okay, those five hit points really do. It seems to keep them uh, al alive a lot longer and they seem to do more damage as well. I don't know why, but they seem to. And of course, Britannia Chariots don't run amok. And as we've seen in other battle videos, run amok Chariots can be a menace to both friend and foe alike. So pound for pound, I think that these are probably the best chariots in the game it should be a great battle for you to watch and here is the other team we have brotherhood member legion 22 now legion 22 has got 11 infantry three archers and six cavalry we have a quick look at his infantry there you'll see that his forward units are just gold shield gold attack if we look at his rear unit of his battle formation though you'll see he's got seven upgrades on I think a couple of his infantry units there's an experienced stroke gold shield gold attack but if you look at his general can you see that he's got eight upgrades on two experienced stripes gold shield gold attack so that's pretty good let's have a look at the upgrades on his cavalry and I see he's got uh, one two three he's got seven upgrades an experienced stroke gold shield gold attack on his cavalry so I think that's a pretty good balanced Roman army there 
and let's have a look at the next their next teammate and that is RV Earth a lot of you know RV Earth very good player and he's got 10 infantry four archers and six cavalry okay 10 infantry four archers and six cavalry okay now he usually brings serious cavalry let's have a look at his cavalry here okay yep yeah, you can see he's got eight upgrades on his cavalry there two experience strokes gold shield gold attack now unusually he's got a praetorian cavalry unit as his general unit and if you notice there he has fully upgraded that unit three experience strokes gold shield gold attack so i think that's a pretty good balanced army but only um 10 infantry is that enough for the modern day battlefield i guess we'll just have to see as the battle unfolds okay um their next teammate is Brotherhood member Clash. Now Clash has got 12 infantry and 6 cavalry. Okay, just 12 infantry and 6 cavalry. Now Clash usually brings um, serious cavalry. Let's have a look at the upgrades on his cavalry. And he has got 8 upgrades. 2 experience strokes, gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry. So make no mistake there, that is some serious cavalry they got there. And their last teammate is Brotherhood member Barkley Man, who's got the Mastodon faction. Now, Barkley Man's got 13 Royal Pikemen, 3 Archers, and 4 Cavalry. Okay, 13 Royal Pikemen, 3 Archers, and 4 Cavalry. Quick look at the upgrades on his Cavalry. And he's just got 6 upgrades as Gold Shield, Gold Attack. So there's the enemy team there. So as you can see, they've got a Rome, a Rome, there, a Rome, a Macedon. And as I say, we've got a Rome, Rome and rome and britannia do you think anybody's got faction advantage here i guess we'll just have to wait and see it should be a great one for you to watch okay at this stage of the battle here just to say we know that legion 22 can be a very aggressive attacking player as well as rv earth both these players we know like to take the battle to the enemy they like to be aggressive they like to uh make the enemy dance to their tune and we also know that Pompey is a very aggressive player as well so I've got a feeling the battle could well kick off on this right flank of ours with uh, Pompey facing those two very aggressive players there I think to start off with though I think there's going to be a little bit of an archer battle here you can see RV Earth's archers here and they're engaging I think it's uh, JGP's archers there on the other side so very often when both teams bring archers, there's sometimes a bit of an archer battle before we get into the main battle here. And that's what's happening there between, um, as I say, JGP and um, RV Earth there. Okay. So you can see here a lot of archers moving forward there to engage JGP's archers, probably trying to take them out. Don't forget those archers would love to target my head herders if I let them come into range. But of course I'm going to keep my uh, barbarian troops away from those archers as long as I can. Okay, at this stage of the battle there, as I say, you can see I'm keeping my Britannia troops way back there behind my allies to protect them from the archers. Make no mistake, those archers would love to target my head herders because they know the devastation that effective against armor heads can cause to their armies. So whatever happens, I always keep my bar barbarian troops at the rear of my allies to protect them as long as I can from archers here. Okay, so the plan is here that Pompey is going to attack Legion there on our right flank. Okay, so that's the plan there. He's going to attack Legion there. I'm going to move my head herders and chosen swordsmen through Pompey's army when he engages those uh, enemy uh, Scipio troops to help him attack. But also, I'm going to take my chariots there. I can see my chariots are going to take them round the right flank. Okay, so I'm going to position them somewhere over there with my chariots. So when Pompey hits, and when my Britannia troops hit as well, so we hold and engage Pompey, uh, sorry, hold and engage Legion there, we can then get the chariots to smash into the flank of uh, uh, Legion's troops there. So that's the battle plan as it stands at the moment. But as we know, uh, very often you can set a battle plan in motion, and then the enemy may well move um, or do something that you're not expecting, and of course the battle plan will have to change. But as I say, at the moment, Pompey looks like he's going to head towards Legion there. You can see Legion running forward here to actually engage Pompey. You can see, as I say, Legion and RV uh, Earth, they're both very aggressive players. If you notice there, I'm already moving my chariots round to the right flank there in anticipation of us engaging Legion there so I can smash into his flank when we have pinned and held him. But as I say, uh, plans are always um, need to be a little bit uh, flexible just in case, uh, as I say, the enemy do things that you're not expecting them to do. Okay, you can see Legion's moved his archers round to that flank to shoot into the flank of Pompey's infantry. 
but you can also see um, as I say Pompey moving aggressively into Legion's army there now Legion make no mistake we'll probably see where I've positioned my chariots and see my Britannia army moving towards him and my guess is he may well move back he doesn't want to really get involved in that because he knows what's coming as I say you can see Pompey here holding uh, five of its units at the rear when he pushes his main units in towards Legion 22 there okay so he may well use those units to try and block and hold earth while we hit legion my uh, britannia infantry and head herders are moving towards uh, legions there and i got my chariots there moving around the flank as i say ready to smash into legion's flank once we pin and hold him with our infantry but uh, i think legion can probably see what's on the way there and he will probably move back okay you can see jgp here has also split his infantry here he's got one lot there that he could help pompey with maybe in holding and blocking rv earth while we attack um, Legion 22 well he's left his other army there to face Macedon and over on our left flank here you can see that Mars' Julio troops are facing um, Clash is Scipio troops there okay now I believe the enemy have got a cavalry advantage here on our left flank you can see Mars has put a couple of infantry units out there uh, to team up with his cavalry because the enemy have got six cavalry there and that's Clash's cavalry, very well upgraded, plus four Macedonian cavalry there. So there's ten cavalry there against his six. So he's moved those couple of infantry units out there that can be good blockers. They can neutralize cavalry charge by kind of taking the cavalry charge themselves and then allowing his own cavalry to charge through them and uh, use their cavalry charge bonus to better effect. You can see JGP's cavalry here is well positioned for the battlefield because he can move his cavalry in any direction here. If you put your cavalry at the back like this, that you see, you can, you've got a full scope of the whole battlefield there where you can move your cavalry uh, to the best to help your team. Okay, but meanwhile here, as I say, you can see Pompey moving forward there. You can see Legion starting to move back. Okay, he's probably seen my uh, chariots move around his flank. He can see my Britannia army moving towards him, and he knows what's coming. So he has now moved his infantry back. Here you can see Pompey moving his cavalry forward, possibly going to target those archers of Legion 22s. He may well hit those there. Although Legion 22's got cavalry quite close. Right, let's just pause again for a second here. So let's say Legion 22 there. He could see what was coming there with Pompey's army and my army and seeing my chariots come around the flank. He knew that he was probably going to get hit there. Pinned and held at the front and then hit by the chariots. He's seen it so many times before, so he's backing off there. Okay, but you can see here the RV Earth is taking his infantry over to that flank. Probably there to probably support Legion, but whether he'll keep moving over to that left flank, I don't know, because then it could be him that got hit. As I say, um, here you can see uh, Pompey's cavalry there. Possibly will target those archer units because he's so close to them. But my guess is that Legion 22, if, if he does that, will counterattack with his own cavalry and try and uh, take out uh, Pompey's um, three cavalry units there. Oh yeah, you can see Legion 22 now is going to counterattack with his cavalry, try and save his archers. And in those cavalry go, and bang there. Pompey needs to pull his cavalry out there quite quick or he's going to lose some of his cavalry units there. And he's pulled them out very quick there. Well done to him as he's moving his infantry forward. Okay, you can see here that RV Earth is moving cavalry over to this flank as well to support uh, Legion's cavalry. Okay, so as I say, here on the right flank, there were so many aggressive players. As I say, at the beginning of the battle here, this is where I thought the battle may well kick off. Um, but as I say, the uh, the enemy have withdrawn um, their armies there a little bit there because they could see what was coming towards them. Uh, and what I mean by that is they know that uh, Pompey was going to hit them along with my Britannia troops and my chariots are always stood on that flank ready to charge in. Okay, so I say here on the right flank, as I said at the beginning of the battle here, I thought this is where the battle is probably going to kick off. Okay, you see my Britannia troops moving forward here. Now bearing in mind I keep my Britannia troops out of archer range for as long as I can. So uh, me moving forward there means it is going to be an imminent attack. Most of those players will know I'll be keeping my Britannia army out of archer range there. So when I move them forward, they know there's an imminent attack coming. And as I say, I position my chariots here on the right flank. Make no mistake here, I am ready to lock and load and charge in there uh, at <clears throat> the first opportunity I get. Okay, but now at this stage, just sort of saying here, we're going to change the plan here because Pompey sees that Macedonian generals bringing pikes over here, and he knows those pikes to kill my Britannian chariots and infantry really quickly. Okay, <clears throat> so I won't want to charge in there with those pikes. Pompey knows this, so we're now going to pull back and decide on a different plan here. Now the problem is when you pull back under fire, okay, from enemy archers, you show the weakest part of your units to the enemy archers, <clears throat> the back the rear of your units, the weakest part 
of your units on RTW are now going to be uh, showing to those archers there. And make no mistake, those archers will be shooting into the rear of us as we're withdrawing, and we will be suffering a lot of casualties. Obviously, they love to, as I said before, to target my head hurlers because they know the devastation that those effective against armor heads can do. Okay, now. If you notice here, the Macedonian, as I say, the Macedonian is moving over to the other flank to try and neutralize my Britannia army and especially my chariots. But over here on the left flank, if you notice, both JG, uh, sorry, both um, Mars and Clash here have got a little bit isolated here from both of their teams. So what we're going to look to do here now is change direction of our attack and move over here to our left flank here, where if we can get over there before his reinforcements, so we could then maybe smash into Clash there with all our armies and cavalry, with all our infantry and cavalry there. Okay, but bearing in mind they've got 10 cavalry units here on the left flank, they could charge into Mars at any time, but as I say, he's got those couple of blocking infantry units there that would neutralize their cavalry charge if they charge in, um, and then he would charge his duty eye cavalry in, and he of course would get his full cavalry charge bonus there. Okay, so as I say, our initial plan was to do the attack here on the right flank, but with the Macedonian pikes moving over there, we're now going to have to switch direction, and we're now going to move over to our left flank. But look at the volume of arrows coming in on our troops here, shooting, as I say, into the weakest part of our units, into the rear of our units there, as we move back under fire from the enemy troops. Okay, so as I say, now we've got to change our battle plan here, and we're all going to shift over to the left, and we're going to try and take out Clash, hopefully, before he can get any reinforcements over there. Now, I'm going to keep my chariots there as a tactical move over on that right flank. As I say, we're all shifting over to the right there, including my infantry and head herders. But I want to keep my chariots here, as I say, as a tactical move here, as a kind of like a bit of a distraction. Because these, the enemy troops there know how powerful these chariots are, and they're going to have to keep an eye on them. And what I'm hoping is they're going to deploy troops over on this right flank to watch my chariots, and that would be less support they can give over to the left flank there, if you see what I mean. Okay, so it's a kind of a bit of a distraction t um, tactic there that I'm leaving my chariots there. And then when I'm ready, because they're fast-moving units, I can bring them into the battle to where they need to go. But at the moment, I'm going to leave them there, as I say, as a bit of a distraction target. The enemy know they're going to have to keep an eye on them. So hopefully they'll deploy some infantry or cavalry over on that flank, which they won't be able to use on the other flank to support their ally. <coughs> okay, so... Let's just pause again for a second here. So as you can see here, RV Earth is putting five fully intact infantry units over there, okay, to try and counter my chariots that he thinks I'm going to try and attack there through those infantry. But of course, that's just five units that have now been taken out of the battle. They're just going to be standing there watching my chariots. And when my chariots are ready to move, they can be fast-moving units, and I can get them to a place on the battlefield where I want to quite fast. Okay, but meanwhile here, as I say, our emphasis now is shifting over to our left flank. Now you can see RV Earth charging one of his cavalry units in there to hit into Mars' his infantry, and bang, as that unit smashes in. Now you can see Mars has now decided to charge all his cavalry into Clash's infantry. You can see six fully intact cavalry charge bonuses going in there, and bang, as they smash in to that enemy Scipio infantry there. That is some kind of impact, but if you notice here, Clash has counterattacked with his own cavalry, and as they smash in to Mars's Julio cavalry there. Okay, so this make no mistake now, this left flank could prove pivotal, all of a sudden could prove pivotal after being quite quiet. Okay, you can see Clash moving his infantry forward, you can see more enemy cavalry charging in there, I think it's RV Earth's cavalry charging in, and bang, that smashes in as well. So as I say now, this left flank could prove pivotal and decisive to the outcome of the battle after being very quiet. You can see some more enemy cavalry, uh, Scipio cavalry charging in there, and Bang! As they smash in there as well. Now, can Mars hold? Can his Julio troops hold here on our left flank before we can get reinforcements over there? Can he hold? Let's just pause again for a second. So you've got all that enemy cavalry and infantry here. You can see that's a thin red line. Mars' troops has turned into a thin red line. They're trying to hold that left flank for us. Can he hold against that massive, um, massive... Um, enemy cavalry and infantry attack smashing into him. There's more cavalry locked and loaded. They're ready to charge into him as well. We're trying to get over to him as fast as we can to support him here. You've got enemy Macedonian cavalry there, fresh, fully intact there. We're going to bang into the rear of his engaged troops as well. Okay, he's still got some battle damage cavalry here. He's probably going to charge in to try and counter the attack. You can see I'm running my... Um, 
Britannia army as far as I can, as fast as I can over there. But remember that um, barbarian troops haven't got as, the same stamina as Roman troops. And when you run them over for a long distance, very often they get tired or very tired, where Roman troops might just be warmed up or uh, winded. Um, and so, you know, barbarian troops are at a disadvantage here, stamina-wise, if they have to run a long way. Because, as I say, if they get tired, very tired, their battle proficiency drops off the edge of a cliff. You can see Pompey here really charging his cavalry and infantry here, trying to help Mars. And our uh, SBQ or ally uh, JGP is also trying to help there. Okay, but make no mistake here, this left flank could well crack. And you can see here all the Macedonian pikemen there, plus a lot of RV Earth's infantry there moving over as well. And over on our right flank here, you can see that JGP's put a few units there to try and hold up Legion 22's units there, stop them coming around our flank. And you can see Earth now is moving his infantry back because I've shifted my chariots round to the centre part of the battlefield there so I can move them in any direction from that particular point. Okay, so there's a general overview of the battle as it stands at the moment. Okay. So as I say, um, the emphasis has shifted from this right flank of ours over to the left flank. And look at all those intact Macedon pikemen there, ready to just be thrown into the fray at any time. A full Macedonian pike army there, ready just to move in. That could be the uh, the final movement of the battle there when they decide to move. As I say here, um, Mars' his units are just about holding, but whether they're going to keep holding there or our left flank is going to be engulfed by Scipio infantry and cavalry and Macedonian cavalry charging in there as well. Okay, you can see here Mars is now counter-attacking with his cavalry and as he charges battle damage cavalry in there as well my Britannia troops are only just getting over there my head hurlers are only just getting over there my infantry hasn't been able to get over there yet you can see some more well upgraded Scipio cavalry charging in there as well bang as they smash in there as well can Mars's Julio troops hold here or is our left flank going to crack oh my gosh right you can see there loads of Mars' his troops are starting to... He's held extremely well here on this left flank of ours. But as you can see there, the bulk of his cavalry and a lot of his infantry have now been broken. You've got Macedonian cavalry coming in on him as well. Okay, my head herders have got over there, just got over there, but my heavy infantry is only just arriving. We've got JGP's cavalry locked and loaded, ready to throw in there. But for all intents and purposes, our left flank looks like it's been basically broken here by concerted attack from the enemy Scipio troops. you got uh, Pompey here trying to get uh, infantry support over there to our left flank, trying to shore it up. you got Legion aggressively attacking um, Pompey's units here and JGP's units. But no, make no mistake, you've got those um, Scipio infantry coming back that were watching that flank against my chariots. You've got loads of those there, fully intact, fresh units. Plus, you've got all those Macedonian pikemen just ready to move forward into our troops. Okay, so if you were a betting person here, which way do you think this is going to go? Okay, you've got Pompey's got five units here, probably watching those Macedonians, or he may well move over to the right flank there, or he may well move over to the left flank to try and shore up our left flank there. Okay, but as I say here, um, JGP's holding our right flank there against Legion's uh, Scipio troops. So there's a general overview of the battle at the moment. But as you can see, our left flank is in the process of being broken here after a terrific hold there by Mars. Okay, so I think JGP's cavalry is there now. I think he's going to wait before he charges them in until I get my heavy infantry in there. If I can get my heavy infantry in a combination attack there of my Britannia chosen swordsman and his cavalry there, we could do a combination attack. But remember, when you've got barbarian troops, always hit the battle cry, the war cry, before you actually attack. It really enhances their attacking specifications there. So you can see now I'm charging in with my infantry, and JGP is also charging in with his cavalry. So we've got a combination of infantry and cavalry going in there into the enemy troops. That's a nice combination hit there. But you can see now the enemy are counter-attacking here with their cavalry against JGP's cavalry, and bang, as they smash in there. Okay. So there's a lot, as I say, on this left flank going on. Now you can see that they've um, changed their direction. They're probably going to charge into Pompey's uh, Brutio troops here. But my chosen swordsmen are just arriving to the scene. Now don't forget, I've pressed uh, War Cry here. So there, that enhances their attack specifications as I charge in. I've got my head herders there throwing their effective against armor heads against those Scipio troops as well. We've got Pompey's uh, Brutio infantry and cavalry charging there at all as well. So we've got a combination attack going on there. And meanwhile, in the centre part of the battlefield here, 
You can see JGP's cavalry just charged into the rear of Legion 22's engaged infantry. Just pause the game here for a second. Now JGP is using his cavalry extremely well around the battlefield here, smashing in to the rear of engaged enemy targets. But you can see the Macedonians are now on the move with those massive pike units moving towards our allies' troops there, okay? So as I say, over here on the on the left flank here, after uh, most of his um, Mars' units have been routed there, uh, we have managed to hold, we managed to shore up that that left flank of ours. I'm going to bring my chariots into play at any time now. I've been holding them back. I've tried to time, get the timing right to bring those chariots in. Okay, Mars has still got three extremely battle damaged units left here on the left flank. But my chosen swordsman, as I say, I always hit war cry to enhance their attacking specifications. They can see that enemy cavalry charging in there. That skippy eye cavalry looking like to charge into my units and then decides to pull back. Probably because he can see his Macedon units, uh, allies moving in there and he doesn't want to get tangled up with uh, any of those pikes. Okay, let's just pause the game for a second here. So you can see I'm moving my chariots forward now. Okay. And as I say, the Macedonian units are now moving towards us. Now, I don't want any truck with uh, pikes or spears with my infantry or chariots because they'll die quite quickly. But as I say, I'm moving the chariots forward. Now, before they even come into contact, look what they do to enemy troops. Just moving those chariots forward there. Let's see. Frightened by chariots. No, make no mistake here. Those chariots take massive morale bonus away from enemy troops. Okay, really making them susceptible to routing. So at the end of battles, you might not see Britannia have got many kills, but the fear factor that chariots bring, destabilizing enemy troops, can really make a difference. You can see the Macedonians starting to move in towards our troops now. As I say, I don't want to put my barbarian troops up against those Macedonian pikemen because my troops will die quickly. Okay, but as I say, you can see those Macedonian pikemen moving forward here. Now remember, Macedon hasn't got very good morale. And if they f see their allies routing uh, around them, that can very often take even more morale away from them and make them more susceptible to routing, plus the effect of the chariots as well, taking morale away from them. So as I say, with uh, the Macedonian um, allies routing all around them there, that is definitely going to be taking morale away from them, plus the chariots uh, effect as well. Okay, so let's pause again for a second. Let's say you've got those pikemen moving towards us. Here, those Macedonian appointment plus <coughs> those um, enemy Scipio infantry units as well. So let's say it looks like Pompey and my units here, Pompey's green Brutio uh, units and my Britannia units here are facing the onslaught of those Macedonian pikes and those Scipio troops there. <coughs> And make no mistake, there's a lot of Macedonian pikemen there. And meanwhile, over here on our right flank, as say, JGP using his cavalry extremely well. They're smashing into the rear of engaged troops, or smashing through them, the engaged troops there. And he's done a heck of a lot of damage. Wouldn't surprise me if he got a lot of kills in this battle with his SPQR troops, where he's been using his cavalry. Extremely uh, well use of, uh, really good use of cavalry there by JGP. But as I say, here, you can see the enemy Macedonians and the enemy Scipio troops starting to move towards us here. As I say, uh, my Britannia troops there, I don't really want to put my Barbarian troops anywhere near Pikes if I can help it head on. Because, um, as I say, they can kill my troops quite quickly. Barbarian troops, uh, as you were aware, uh, don't stand very good against Spear or Pikemen there. But there's a combination of Pompey's uh, Brutio infantry and my infantry there together. And we seem to work quite well together here um, against these, um, these Macedonian troops. Don't forget, I'll have my head herders there throwing those effective against armor heads into those Macedonians as well, causing them more casualties. So the more casualties they suffer, uh, the more their morale suffers even more, making them more susceptible to routing. Okay, so as I say here, uh, Pompey and myself doing quite well there against the Macedonians. Right, I notice there's a group of um, Scipio infantry here that I'm going to hit with my chariots. Bang! As my chariots go in there, more chariots going in there as well. Now what I wanted to try and do here with my chariots is draw as many enemy units over here to fight my chariots as I can. The more units over here fighting my chariots, the less there are fighting my allies. Right, can you see that the enemy Scipio General has charged his cavalry in as well? I'm hoping he's going to commit more infantry units as well here to my chariots. Okay, yeah, now my chariots might not do very good here, but if I can attract enemy units over here, that's good for me. So my chariots are attacking. We've got his cavalry and infantry units involved there. Okay, he's, moved, he's bringing more infantry units over here to attack my chariots. So all those enemy infantry units there are fighting my chariots, which hopefully allows my allies there more time to uh, take out enemy units. 
Okay, so very often here you can see moves thinking what's going on here, but there are tactical reasons behind these moves. And so, as I say, trying to draw units over, we've routed the Macedonian general. Now, we know JGP is behind the enemy troops as well with infantry and cavalry, so he could charge into the rear there while I'm drawing away enemy units, or he could charge into the rear of those enemy units that are attacking my chariots. Okay, so it's up to uh, JGP where he wants to attack. But as I say here, um, Pompey and myself, look... <coughs> I've managed to rout the Macedonian general with our infantry units there. Okay, as I say, every time the war cry runs out, I hit war cry again, as I say, to enhance the battle specifications. As I say, my chariots aren't doing that well against that infantry, but I've drawn over all those infantry units there, now enabling us look, to rout these Macedonian units that are in front of us, and then we take our infantry on over to attack those Scipio units there. Okay, so as I say, that, that chariot attack uh, may not have looked very successful there in the kills that it got, but it drew over, drew over a lot of enemy units there that could have been used in other parts of the battlefield. Okay, so now you can see we're moving forward here, uh, both Pompey's uh, Brutio troops and my chosen swordsman into those um, Scipio troops. Plus, don't forget, those are effective against armor heads going in on them as well, causing them casualties, lowering their morale there as well and I think I've got one chariot unit left that is still sapping the morale of those troops as well I think there's one yeah I can see one chariot moving around there you can see that Scipio cavalry charging again and bang as it charges into my chosen swordsman there let's just pause the game for a second so I say got one chariot there that which will be uh, taking uh, morale away from the enemy troops there just having one there's only one um, chariot left in that unit I think but it still does the fear factor thing and as you can see here I'm still charging my chosen for swordsman forward there into those Scipio troops and as I say um, the head the effective against armor heads are going into those Scipio troops well, of course what I'm targeting is that Scipio general I want to take out that Scipio general if I can and don't forget here Pomp is still throwing pilots into those Scipio troops as well lowering their morale by causing casualties as well and then he charges in as well as I say we're going for that Scipio general if we can take that Scipio general out right can you see JGP bringing his battle damage cavalry in there he's taking the Scipio general out and there goes those cavalry he was going to charge him in, but he saw those Macedonian pikemen coming towards him and decided that he wouldn't do that and that Macedonian pike unit is now routed look so um, between us, um, where our left flank looked like it had definitely been broken there through great support work there we've managed to shore up our left flank and um, <coughs> It looks like um, we've um, we've done well there on the left flank, and it looks like we may well go on to um, <coughs> to win the uh, win the battle here. JGP once again using his cavalry like he has done so well over the battlefield here, attacking all the time with that cavalry. Let's just pause the game for a second, here. just to look at the intensity of this battle, as a lot of you know that I like to do. So right over here on the right flank here, that's where you can see. Um, if you like the killing starts there all the way over there on that particular flank and then as we move up the battlefield here you can see there's more intense um, dead here because you can see there's more intense fighting so that's where the piles of dead are as you move on at the battlefield here you can see once again massive piles of dead here where the fighting has been so intense all over the battlefield here and as I say um, it looks like our team has um, <coughs> has managed to go on to um, to win the uh, win the battle there, I think we've just routed the last. There we go, last of the units. First thing I like to say is really well played to everybody in the game. Really well played, guys. And as you can see, it's an average victory. A lot of you know I, I tend to like putting close victories on rather than average, but it was an average victory. I thought it would be a close one. Just draw your attention. Highest kills in the game, Brotherhood member JGP, two thousand and seventy-one kills. So well done to JGP. My guess is that most of those kills he probably got with his cavalry. Well done to Pompey, got some good kills too, and well done to Mars, got some good kills. Britannia, now if you look there, the kills are pretty don't look that good, pretty poor. But remember that's only half the story with Britannia. The fear factor, the massive fear factor that the chariots bring that take away morale from enemy troops, destabilizing them and making them more susceptible to routing, to help your allies route them even quicker. So as I say, whenever you see Britannia kills not doesn't look very good, that's only half the story of the Britannia faction there. Okay? So, uh, once again, just say really well played everybody again. Well done to Legion 22. Probably didn't get the kills that he wanted there, but I thought he played well, very aggressive there. So, well done to him. Uh, well done to RV Earth. Got some good kills there. Um, some nice tactical moves there. Some really good support work. Well done to Brotherhood member Clash. Probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to over on that left flank, but he did well. And well done to Barkley, man, there. 
he got some really good kills as well so really well done uh, to that team there well done guys you played extremely well but also really well done to whether member Marty held really well on that left flank for so long um, you know, I was just amazed on how he managed to hold against those massive cavalry and infantry attacks that was coming in on him. Um, I think he proved a pivotal role for our team there on that left flank in holding so long. So really well done to him. Well done to Brother Member JGP. I think his cavalry hits were so strategic and well timed. He did extremely well there. And well done to Pompey. Nice aggressive attack in there and great teamwork by him as well. So just like I say, really well played for everybody in the game. I hope you enjoyed it at home. Look forward to seeing you soon and bye for now.